Thank you, everybody. Kevin, what's it been like just preparing for this Clemson defense? What are the biggest things that stand out to you? Well, um, very talented. It's really, you know, we didn't play them a year ago, but they had all those tremendous defensive linemen that were drafted. And you watch, they've replaced those guys with quality players, really good. I think they're linebackers. I know Coach Venable as well. They're playing great. The Simmons kid is an unusual player in the way he's using him with, with his strengths and moving him to so many different spots and with his range and skill set. Uh, very multiple in coverages and multiple in fronts and multiple in blitzes and you almost can watch it too much and can confuse yourself because there's a lot. Uh, that's a little bit of, of, of Brent, the way he's wired. It's a little bit of the talent that he has and using those guys. So it's almost like you know you have so much time and this is a quicker first game than normal for the bowl game. So it's on us a little faster, but there's so much videotape that sometimes it can be overwhelming. And it's trying to cut through the, the clutter and figure out what you're gonna get, which is hard. But it's great defense, very challenging. You watch them play all year, you watch them play for multiple years, and they play as good a defense as they in the country. As you mentioned, you know Brent well. What is it about him that makes his scheme so, talent, so challenging to play against? I think he's, um, I think he has some core fundamental beliefs the way he was raised you know playing for coach Snyder and being around coach Stoops and um, uh, being around coach Levitt as a player and as a coach and the way those guys trained him and then all those years at Oklahoma I think he was there for well, 13 14 give or take now he's been at Clemson on a great run so he's got a, a great background that starts with fundamentals effort energy he's a high energy guy Phenomenal workout guy. I, used to, I couldn't. I couldn't get to the golf course fast enough. He couldn't get in the weight room and and go run and get get his five miles of running in back in the day. So he's a high energy guy. Has core fundamentals and beliefs and tackling and being aggressive and getting after the ball. But I think over time he's evolved where he's got things he's comfortable in where he's very multiple. Brent, um, I, when we had a chance to compete in practice, those practices were so fun going against him and Coach Stoops, and it was me and Chuck Long or Kevin Sumlin or Jay Norvell were all kind of working together, Josh Heupel. And it was so competitive because you didn't know what you were going to get. And it made you work. And one day they would get you and the next day you would try to quote, come back and get them without ever being personal. So he's got a great mind. He's got a quick mind. Uh, he's very much a game day coach. I think Coach Stoops coached a football game like a basketball coach where he was into the, a lot of guys follow a piece of paper and a script and tendencies. Coach was a feel guy. I think Brent has great feel for the game great feel for defense, great feel for game day, and he puts his guys in great situations. What do you think it was about that staff at Oklahoma that breeded so many of you guys that have gone on to be successful coaches? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of other places that are similar. One, it's, uh, it's one of those programs that attracts guys, but also we had a great leader, uh, one with the president, with the AD, Joe Castiglione, but then with Coach Stoops. It attracted quality guys, but were really good coaches. Um, and it was fun. I mean, it was uh, it was a lot of fun coaching there, and it was fun to practice. That's why I made a comment. I think you guys remember. I like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That goes back to Oklahoma. Those spring ball days and those Tuesdays and Wednesdays were. Com it was never personal, but it's almost like you were playing with your brother and you were trying to kick his butt. And sometimes he got you, and sometimes you got him. And those were some of the. As a coach, those were some of the most fun days of my life. There were some rumors recently that you were a candidate for the head coaching job at Colorado State. Just was that something you were actually interested in and kind of what was that process? Well, those rumors <laughs> that when my children called me that day asking what's going on because they didn't have a clue, so it was the beauty of rumors. That was kind of a, uh, we did have a chance in visiting because Coach Myers part to ask if there was interest. There was, uh, I knew the athletic director there. Uh, they went in another direction. Uh, but, uh, you know, if it's meant to be, I thought we did a, uh, had the opportunity through those Oklahoma times to get to Indiana. I thought we were building a strong program. Uh, we've lost that opportunity. We had a great place. And if it's meant to be, maybe you get that opportunity. But I'm not living my life to get that opportunity right now. My, my life is being led by, you know, my kids are now kind of grown. Got one left to go. But it's coaching these kids at a great place and trying to win as many games and keep pushing this program forward to greatness. So you anticipate being back here in 2020 for Ohio State? What's well, a two-way street now. It's not a one-way deal. No, if they want to keep you. It's, 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 yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I, I didn't pursue, I haven't pursued, quote, jobs. Um, I just always felt you do your job uh, the best you can, and, and if opportunities are meant to be, uh, the older I've gotten, it's more about making sure you're raising your family where it needs to be raised, and that's kind of almost done, although you're always still a parent raising 
quote your kids in there for them. But now it's about impacting lives, coaching kids, and hopefully impacting a program. So got a great relationship with Coach Day. Love the players we're with, and so I'm, I, I'm blessed to have a great job. And we got a tremendous challenge this week, so we're looking forward to that. Josh to do what he's done. We have seen so, some. You know, it took us some time to build up to even be yeah. able to start. The only thing, though, I mean, um, as a young guy, like I remember at the bowl game two years ago, I grabbed him and I go, "You watch everything Billy Price does to a team. Watch him warm up because Billy Price was the best practice coach I ever saw. Before. And so one, he did have some good visuals." Mike Jordan's a good player. Billy, I thought Billy Price was a phenomenal. So he had, he had some good visuals. When you go against our defensive line every day, the way we do the individual drills and the inside running drills, you get used to going against Devon and BB and those inside guys. So um, I think what he was around, the way Mick and Stud trains and who he competes against, I don't know if he couldn't have done. I mean, you have to have the talent to do that. But because of the way we practice, we were, he was going to develop. It was just like, it was what happened. The offensive coach has had to really slow Justin down as he's dealing with his knee injury in terms of practice, or does he kind of know where he's at, and has he done a good job of maintaining a decent pace as he as he rehabs? Yeah, I mean he's I mean, he's, not, he's doing everything, and um, I think uh, the only the only the only thing we'll do sometimes if the play gets extended and he and he's in a in a running mode, and he takes off running. I think I think Ryan will toot the whistle just not to extend the run. So he's out there and makes a plan out of open space into a 30 yard play. So if he takes off on a scramble after about five, six, eight yards, he'll toot the whistle just to let it play out. So I think he, I think Ryan's just trying to manage a short whistle when he's running. But he does he's doing everything from individual, minutes, all the running, dynamic warming, stretching the whole game. He does it all. He's, he, I mean, he looks. I don't know if he's 100, percent but he looks healthy. He looks, he looks healthy. He said he was 85 percent. That he, he was hoping to wear the, the smaller brace for the game. Braces. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I mean, that brace will slow him down. He's fast. <laughs> a, a brace would slow me down because I am slow. <laughs> Kevin, what are your thoughts on Joe Royer? I mean, what stood out in his recruitment about Joe Royer? Yeah. Uh, one. Joe had a bunch of offers and we didn't offer it. He had to come to camp and earn it. And he came and had a, had a kick tail performance in a camp setting. It was off the chart. Because um, we didn't know. I saw him in a spring workout. We did one of the spring practices in Ohio. And they were lifting and running. They're like, yeah, okay, you know, he's still tall, he's skinny. You know, is he a receiver? Is he a tight end? Uh, he came to camp and like knocked our socks off. And then he backed it up with like 70 catches, 1,200 yards, and played for state championship. And he's got to get bigger. I got to make sure he's eating breakfast every day. And he's got to gain some weight. But I think he has a skill set different from Camarte Hamilton, who weighs 260. And we brought in as a bigger fullback blocking guy. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to do well for us. You know, I, he's a little bit more like Jeremy Ruckert. So you, you kind of have different skill sets. But uh, great program. Uh, love where he's from. Love his family. West Sider. Get some Skyline chili. Don't tell my wife that I'm vegan. <laughs> but I, I got a lot of respect for Joe. I'm excited. He will not be coming early because with the elder uh, academic deal, he'll have to finish out his, his spring semester. So we'll have to do a great job of him this spring to get him, keep him developed. Great future. How do you, what have you guys done to strike that balance between making sure that your guys are as fresh as possible for this game but and being as prepared as possible for you? Yeah. Yeah, I just think... Um, well, one of our young coaches, uh, Trey Holtz, went to see his father, who's playing in a bowl game, I think, coming up this Thursday or Friday. I think Friday, maybe. And I said, how'd your dad say? He said, well, they're good. He said, you know, they practice different. He goes, because, you know, when you get used to our routine, and we kind of got our routine, and it's, I don't know, sometimes, I don't know if it's superstition, but it's routine, but here's the volume of plays we do. Uh, they change this week to week based on the structure of what you want to emphasize and whatever, but, you know, kind of here's what it is. And, you uh, Coach Day's been pretty adamant this year, kind of not being regimented, but staying to it. And, uh, uh, I think our guys are, are, are ready. Well, we had a little bit of time off. Uh, I think giving our kids a chance to go home and see their families for a few days was kind of key, because it's more about mentally being fresh than physically. So I think I think uh, yeah, I think uh, both teams are about in the same place, and it's going to be a fast and a physical game for us. Saturday.